uh, working towards medical school. Today we'll be going over some more commonly asked questions at both the high school and college level in regards to chemistry. Uh, if you need some homework help or tutoring, uh, you can always check out the links in the description below. And with that, we can now begin with the questions we have for this session. So, in this equation here, uh, it starts off saying that two reactions with different act activation energies, one does not equal Ea2. We're just writing down the information we're given to, to answer this question. But they have the same rate at room temperature, meaning that the K value, small k, equals K2 at room temperature. Okay, so we have two information right now that the activation energies aren't the same, but the rate is the same at a certain temperature, which is room temperature. Which statement correctly describes the rates of these two reactions at the same higher temperature? So, same higher temperature. So, for this one, this question here, it's actually more of a conceptual question. It's, I would say, honestly, it is quite tricky, but you do need to use um, like the rate laws and everything to answer it, starting with this equation here involving the exponential factor. So I'm going to write down the full equation here. It's at the rate, okay, is equal to the exponential factor e, which is, you know, e to the power of, so that's just a constant, but it's to the power of negative activation energy over r times t. And r is a gas constant in this case, and t will be temperature. But this is a formula that we're basing off that question. So now the reason why I say that it's conceptual is because you have to really break this down. So now, because E is being raised to a negative number, you kind of have to do the inverse in terms of relationships. So the two relationships you have to really focus on in this question is that because temperature is the denominator here, okay? So if temperature goes up, you're going to now have a smaller negative number, meaning that E will not be diminished so much. So in a sense, a higher temperature means a higher value for E, meaning that, you know, according to the laws, when temperature is increased, which would make sense, the rate should also increase. So that's one of the things that we need to make sure we pay attention to. And the same thing can be applied for actually the activation energy. So because it's an enumerator, if you go through the steps I did, you'll be able to see that as activation energy increases, the rate will decrease. And it also makes sense because if you need more energy for the reaction to go through, then that means overall, there'll be less of the reaction if you always need to be spending more energy. So that's why the rate would decrease. So with those, we need to make sure that we're looking at the whole picture here. The main thing being is that because this is happening on an, whoopsie, let me just get out of there. Because this is happening on an exponential level, okay, that means that these changes aren't in a linear fashion. So these changes will, if it was a graph, okay, it would look more like that, as in it's exponentially increasing. Well, in this case, because it's a negative, it'd look more like, it'd be a weird one, something like this. Overall, though, it's just a really weird thing. Point being is that it's not a linear function, okay? So now let's go into the question and try to break it down step by step because that's the part that gets a little bit confusing. So now we have, uh, if we put these two together, K1 is equal to K2 at room temperature, okay? So let us write everything down that we have. So remember that A, 
okay, this a right here is a constant. It's an exponential factor, right? But this exponential factor varies for every, um, you know, molecule going through reaction. Any formula can have different exponential factors based on their surroundings and everything else, like how the concentration is and everything. You can actually calculate this based on the other information given. But right now, we just know it's some number. So we're going to start labeling everything by ones and twos based on the two reactions, OK? So if we write it out, since the two k's are equal to each other, that means a1 e to the power of e activation energy 1 over r times temperature 1, OK? And temperature 1 is a room temperature in this case. Actually, so to make it less confusing, I'm going to put temperature room is equal to a2, okay, e activation energy of the second one over r times temperature room. Okay, so now we have those two. So these two equal the same thing, but these two numbers are different, the activation energy one and activation energy two. The only place it can change really since everything else is constant because that's just a gas law. R is just a gas law, so we don't really need that. The only thing that can change is actually the exponential factor. Okay? And if it equals the same, let's say now, because the question is asking, you know, with a larger or the smaller activation energy, right? Let's say that EA1, instead of doesn't equal, let's erase that. And let's say that EA1 was bigger than EA2. So activation energy of the first one is bigger than the second one. If this right here is bigger than the second one, okay, that means that E will be a smaller number, okay? Because remember, if activation energy increases, K decreases. So to make up for it, this A1 has to be a bigger number than A2 for it to end up equaling the same. So I hope you followed. So if overall the activation energy here is a bigger number, okay, than this one. So this is a smaller number, I'm gonna put it in red so you can at least track with the colors. That means that A2 has to be smaller than A1, okay? Because this has to make up for the fact that it's a larger negative number. So that means with that logic here, okay, A1 is greater than A2. And that will always stay the same. Now, as I mentioned, this is an exponential difference, not linear. Okay? And the reason why that's important is because now we have a new addition to the information that A1 is greater than A2. So, now the question is asking, what happens when you increase the temperature? So, let's write it out again with the A1s and A2s, but different time of different temperature. A1E, activation energy of the first one, over R, temperature high. That's what I'm gonna put here. And we have A2. We no longer know the relationship because, you know, we've changed the temperature. A2, R, temperature high. Okay, so, now then, we have this information here. High temperature increase in that, okay? Meaning that overall, the temperature increases, the rate will increase. So remember, as temperature goes up, rate goes up. But how would it affect these two rates? So these two rates started off being the same at room temperature. And remember, everything is exponential. So when you increase this, right? you get overall in this section a smaller negative number still same thing for here a smaller negative number right but remember the information that i told you that the activation energy of the first one was bigger than the activation energy of the second one so this smaller number here will be greatly affected by the change in temperature than this number because if the second activation energy 
was already small to begin with, it doesn't really get affected that much by a larger denominator. For example, if you had 3 over 10 versus 1 over 10, right? Okay, just as an example. But then you made it 3 over 100 versus 1 over 100. Still a huge difference, right? But this one went from 3 over 10 to 3 over 100. That versus 1 over 10 to 1 over 100, although it's the same, this is a linear aspect, the difference comes in is because you're now actually using it as an exponent. So this value here is no longer a linear comparison of 1 to 1 ratio. This change here is a much more significant change than this change here. Okay? And the reason why I wrote that just as an example, you can even be doing the, uh, in your calculator as well to even verify this information. That's why I say this is more of a conceptual question because there are a lot of moving pieces, but you'll see that although the temperature is increasing in both scenarios, because in this case here, in the first case, since we had a larger numerator and then it's being diminished and then, you know, being exp exponented, you know, negative, this E overall will, will experience a drop, but not, will experience a major drop for sure. And same with this one as well. But then we see here that the A1 was bigger than A2. So although these two experience that drop, this E will still remain a greater number than that E. Hence the example that I showed here below. Okay, so that's 3 over 100, 1 over 100. So even though, yes, it is a negative, this number here versus that number, this would not have as much of a detrimental change, quote unquote, than this one. Because of the fact that at the end of the day, you're gonna end up with a smaller value overall for E. So both E drop. So I think what I'm trying to say as a summary for this question is that there is definitely a drop in the E. We can't really say by how much, we just know that the denominator increased. So the only thing that we can say is that because the A1 is greater than the A2, this will make up for that exponential change. And overall, this K value will actually end up being greater than K2. It's a very strange question. You have to make sure that you know your relationships for this one specifically. But yes, overall, you will see that the answer for this one um, would be A that the reaction with the larger um, EA, so even though quote unquote larger activation energy does mean that it, the rate would be smaller, when you increase both temperatures and they start off at the same place, the one with the larger activation energy will reflect that change more. So that is A. And hopefully working through this, it just helps you understand that better. So overall, just know the relationships. And most importantly, once you get to the end, um, you'll see that although both temperatures increased and that means that E dropped because the exponential factor is greater than the second one, that's what makes it so that this one is able to have a larger K1 than, than uh, the other one, okay? So what they did here just provided, you know, with numbers and such. So with that, as temperature increases, K increases. Yep. Both Ks will double, double, but the higher activation energy species will still have a larger concentration. So that's how it works. So in terms of this relationship here, if you need to take notes, I'll just leave it on this screen. You can pause and just write that down. But overall, just know that relationship there so that way you can answer these type of questions. So this is correct. And now let's move on to the next question.